Hello, and thank you for joining me today to learn about RBC Express's administration services. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to add and manage the users of your online business banking platform. RBC Express is a multi-user online banking platform. When you are new to RBC Express, we will enroll at least two administrators. Those two admins can then grant access to other users or create additional administrators. The reason we enroll two admins is to fulfill the security setting that we call dual administration. This setting requires that when one admin adds a new user, the second administrator must sign into the platform to approve that user. This dual approval process also applies to updating the permissions of an existing user. There are two types of administrators on RBC Express. The first is the administrator without service access. This administrator can add users and their permissions. They can fulfill the dual admin requirements, set up approval rules and assign tokens. However, they cannot access the actual services. So this admin type will not be able to view your accounts or make payments. The second type is an admin plus or an administrator with service access. This type is like a super user. They can do all of the administrative activities of adding users, granting permissions, setting up the rules and assigning tokens, as well as dual approval, and they can access the services themselves so they can make payments or view the accounts. Your profile's administrators will be set up as either admin or admin plus based on the conversations you had with your RBC representative when you were originally enrolled for RBC Express. So administrators can make additional admins or they can set up users. Admins have full control over what a user can see or do when they sign into the platform. And we strongly recommend only giving a user access to those features that they require for their role within your organization. For example, you may want a user who can view your accounts only, who cannot create payments. Or you may want the opposite, where they cannot see the account balance, but they can set up your payments like payroll or wire payments. If your users are setting up payments, you may want to restrict the dollar amount of the payments they are allowed to send independently, or even have all of the payments that they create be approved by yourself or other admins. Any combination of these options are possible. And if you have multiple accounts on RBC Express, the user permissions may differ based on the accounts being accessed. To add users, start from the home page and use the blue banner at the top of your screen to click on the administration tab. And on the left, select the link that says manage users and permissions. The Manage Users page will show the current users and administrators on your platform. To view their access details, you can click on the individual's name. On the far right, you'll notice that you can assign and unassign tokens, delete users, and lock and unlock the access. But to add a new user, we're going to use the blue button at the top of the page. On this next page, you'll notice that all fields are required unless they've been marked optional. It's important to accurately fill in the first and last name of your user, as this information will be used to authenticate them in future. And the username will automatically fill in as their first and last name. The sign-in ID must be a valid email address as the user will be receiving their initial registration email to this address. The mobile phone, on the other hand, is optional. Including a mobile phone in this platform will enable the user to receive mobile alerts, but only if they enable them within their individualized settings. Once these details are accurately filled in, select the blue Save button at the bottom. The site will provide you with a temporary password. 
This password must be given to the user. You can copy and paste or take a screenshot of this page. In order to move to the next steps, you do need to select the checkbox to confirm that the password has been safely stored. And the next message that comes up is prompting you to assign the user permissions. This is where we decide what this user can see or do. When adding a user, you will have an option to keep them as a user with custom or individual access, or you may want to make them an admin. If you choose to make them an admin, you will need to enter your token and get approval from an admin who already exists on your profile. This option allows you to create both admins with and admins without service access. The rest of this video will focus on the individual or custom permissions. When you select the individual access, two drop-down menus will appear. The first one on the right is called View slash Edit Assigned Services. This will be blank for a new user. For an existing user, it would show any services that were previously assigned to the individual. And on the left is the Add Available Services list. This menu has a list of all the services that this user does not currently have access to. And for a new user, this will represent the full list of services that are available on your platform. So I'm going to start with the Add Services dropdown. If you're looking at this dropdown and you are not sure of the purpose of any of the services listed, you can review a description of each service in the administration document within the Digital Training Center. I'm going to begin by setting up a user who will be able to view my accounts. There are three services that they will need to do that. The first is at the top of the list, it's called Account Images. This allows the user to see images of checks that have passed through my account. If you select this service, you'll be presented with a chart which lists the accounts that are available on the left-hand side, and we can give the user all accounts by using the Select All box at the top, or we can select only the accounts that they need for their role. Once you're happy with the selections here, select the blue Assign button at the bottom of the page. Now the Account Images service has been added to the drop-down on the top right that says View and Edit Services. The next service my user will need is called Balance Reporting. This allows them to see current balances and recent transactions. You'll notice here a similar chart where I can select all or only some of the accounts. And the third permission they'll need is called RBC Statements. This option allows them to view, save, or print the full month end statement. Now that I have added these three services, they have moved over to the View slash Edit Assigned Services drop-down on the right, where they can be edited at any time. If I leave my user like this, they'll be able to see my account, but they won't be able to make any payments. In order to demonstrate how to add permissions to a payment service, I'm going to choose Wire Payments from the Available Services drop-down menu. Similar to the other services, you'll see the list of available accounts on the left-hand side of the chart. However, when you add permissions to a payment service, there are additional columns where you will be making some important selections. At the top of the column, you'll see categories like one-time or recurring payments. At the bottom is a scroll bar where you can move the chart to the left or the right. Within each of these categories, there are permissions to create payments, modify payments, and approve payments. 
If you want to set up a user who can initiate a payment that yourself or others will approve, you will give them full access and then remove the approve options under one time and recurring. However, if you wanted the user to be able to be an approver, you will leave this option selected. Being an approver requires a token and it can mean a few other things as well, depending on your internal approval process. This user could be allowed to approve payments independently, or they could approve, but only within a specific dollar limit. Or they could be one of multiple approvers. On this page, we are indicating whether or not the user can approve this payment type. In the Approval Rules section, we'll indicate the limits or identify how many approvers are needed. You can learn more about approval rules in the Approval Rules video or learn more about approving payments from the Tokens and Other Security Features video. I also want to point out the section for reports. These permissions allow a user to view and track the status of a wire sent from this platform. Once I select a sign on those permissions, the second administrator must now sign in and approve those permissions. If you're the second admin approving, you'll sign into your platform and in the center of the page, you'll see a message that there are items pending approval. To approve them, you just click on the counter and it will tell you what service or user has been modified. If you want to see the exact changes that have been made, you can use the blue link, but if you're already aware of the changes, just use the select box on the left hand side, select confirm and approve, and then you'll be asked to confirm one last time. And in red, it will confirm there are no more changes that are pending approval for your platform. The following services will require approval from a second administrator. File transfer, which allows you to upload a payment file from a third-party software. ACH record manager, which allows you to create payment files on the platform. ACH payment manager, which allows you to modify payments that you have uploaded through either file transfer or record manager wire payments, which are domestic or international payments that could be in Canadian, US, or other foreign currencies. The dual approval is optional on all other services, so it's required for those ones that I've listed here, but you may have that turned on for your other services as well. So now we've taken a look at how to add a user and manage their access. But users can also be deleted. From the Manage Users page, on the far right-hand side, there's a delete icon attached to each user's name. This is also where you'll find the Lock option. That allows you to temporarily lock someone's access to your platform. If you intend to replace a user, Keep in mind that within the permissions menu is an option to copy permissions from one user to another. This is here to ensure that the new user can take over the same responsibilities smoothly. If you have any questions about the features shown in this video, you can always contact the Client Support Center. Our phone number is at the bottom of your screen at all times.